So overall, food stamp participation in the United States declined for 12 straight months. According to recently released Department of Agriculture data on food stamp enrollment, the most recent data on nationwide enrollment in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, the program in charge of administrating food stamps, showed that the number of people on food stamps went down every month in fiscal year 2018. The data provided a month-to-month -month breakdown of how many people overall canceled their SNAP benefits over the past 12 months. So starting off in October to November, 4 million people dropped off. In November to December, about 360,000 people dropped off. December to January, 740,000 people dropped off. January to February, 385,000 people dropped off. February to March, 39,000 people dropped off. March to April, 430,000 people dropped off. April to May, 140,000 people dropped off. May to June, 175,000 people dropped off. June to July, 352,000 people dropped off. July to August, 86,000 people dropped off. August to September, 300,000 people dropped off. September to October, 62,000 people dropped off. And last week, that number of individuals and households on food stamps dropped to historic lows, with 1.4 million households and 3.6 million individuals dropping off of the food stamp rolls since the first month that President Trump served as president. This kind of news doesn't surprise me anymore, because the way that the Trump economy is going, you know, despite what the Democrats say, oh, the economy is doing terrible, oh, you know, we're falling down, and you know, that that's not the case, our economy is actually booming ahead, and that is why you see so many people dropping off of food stamps because now they can get jobs that, you know, were taken away from them under the Obama administration. But now those jobs have returned and now we have lower taxes and now people can go to work. Their tax burden is less now, which means they have more money at the end of the year to invest in themselves, invest in, you know, their own retirement, their own futures, their economy. They can go out and spend it. You know, when people have money, they tend to do things with it. And taxes is the easiest way to take money away from people. You see, the Democrats hate this kind of stuff. They hate it when they see people on welfare dropping off because they want people to be dependent on the government. That They want people to have the government come in and take care of them. And that's why the Democrats, it was not too long ago where the Democrats tried to propose a national-based income. I think it was in Chicago they tried to do that. And thankfully it was shut down, but a lot of people in these communities really wanted that. And I said at the time that a lot of this money was going to be used for drugs and all these other things. Because you have to remember that the people that was going to be on this universal base income are especially the people who, you know, the Democrats want to give it to are the people not interested in investing and, in, you know, investing in themselves, investing in their own retirement, in their own success, investing in businesses that they want to grow. They, they, they don't do that. They want to go out there and party and drink and spend their money. You know, which is fine and dandy because, you know, that keeps the economy rolling. But essentially, the Democrats were saying that this new universal base income was going to stop poverty. And that's the case that the Democrats always use when, you know, initiating a new public social program that it was, it's going to help the people. It's, it's going to help people get out of poverty. It never happens. It always gets abused and used by the same people that it's meant to help. But now you see, you know, what was it, like 3 million people dropped off of, you know, food stamp enrollment? That is amazing news. That is great news. It means our economy is, is booming. Our economy is doing great. You see, when you have more and more people getting on food stamps, it means that they cannot find jobs. It means that the economy is either slowing down or not, you know, it's declining. But when you have people going off of food stamps and into the work field, that means that the economy is doing great that it's booming. And our economy right now, the U.S. economy is booming right now. The U.S. economy is very optimistic right now. There is a lot of consumer optimism in the market right now. Now, obviously, that's not going to last forever, but it's doing its job right now. And Trump promised this, you know, in his 2016 campaign that he was going to get people off of welfare, that he was going to get people off of this food stamp enrollment programs. And look at that, another promise kept. You see, under Obama, you had millions of people going on food stamps, and Obama himself actually encouraged people to go on food stamps to get on these social programs 
And then when Trump got elected, you had people getting off of food stamps and going into the work field. You had people going out there and working and providing for their families and not being dependent on the government, which means less tax money is being allocated to that social program, which is a good thing. Because America already spends, what was it, like $900 billion a year? A year, remember that, a year, on social programs like uh, food stamps and welfare and you know stuff like that. $900 billion. And yet, you know, of course, you have Democrats in the office whimpering about giving Trump $8 billion for his wall. But they have no problem spending $900 billion on these social programs that are most likely abused, that are most likely filled to capacity with corruption. And remember, we have, uh, you know, a apparently four more years with Donald Trump when he wins his, you know, re-election. And I believe he's going to win. I, I don't buy to the whole Democratic narrative like, oh, you know, Trump is done now. Trump is done. No, I totally believe that Trump is going to win re-election. It's, it's a no-brainer at this point. Trump just has too many victories under his belt. He has too many chances to come out to his supporters and say, look what I've done for you. You know, look at all the promises I've kept and yada, yada, yada. Now, the only thing that might hurt him is, you know, he hasn't got anything done significantly done with the border wall and that was one of his big big campaign promises was to get the border wall built and for the most part he's gotten some parts of it built He's gotten some parts of it, you know, reinforced and built and funded and stuff like that. But it's like I said, it's an uphill battle with that. But the supporters want to see progress. And I think if Trump explains himself well enough and say, you know, I'm trying my hardest, you know, I've done this so far, you know, you give me another four years, I can get even more accomplished. And all he has to do is name off, you know, one by one, the promises he's kept. And, and that, you know, that's a lot of them. You know, Trump has done a lot of good things, even though the the mainstream media don't report on them and us their supporters kind of forget about them so yes i believe that trump has you know almost an 80 85 percent chance of winning re-election no doubt because and also the other thing it's really hard to beat a sitting president in his re-election term it's it's really hard to dethrone that that has only happened a few times in america's history and also Trump can use this, you know, the whole food stamps and welfare thing, you know, the declining numbers, he can use that in his campaign speech as well, saying, look how many people are going back to work. Look how many people are getting off of these social programs. Look how good our economy is doing. And our economy is doing well. Our economy is booming along. You have a lot more people investing in the stock market. You have a lot of people buying things and, you know, being very optimistic in the economy. And, that, and that's a good thing. Now, me personally, I'm not buying as many stocks as, you know, I would be if we were in more of a pessimistic economy. But that's just my own personal investing strategy. And remember, the more people that go to work, the more people that get off of these welfare food stamp stuff, the less taxpayer money is allocated to fund these people, which probably means the people who remain on them probably get more money. I mean, if we're being 100% honest, that's pretty much what happens. But as of right now, as of, you know, making this video, you have millions Millions of people dropping out of food stamps. You have millions of people going back to work, which adds more tax money into the circulation and it adds more labor force into the economy, which makes the economy do even better. The economy is a self-feeding thing in that sense. You know, the Democrats give Trump all of this bad feedback along with the mainstream media. And, and you know, the mainstream media is not going to report on these numbers. The mainstream media is not going to gloat about this because, you know, obviously the, the Democrats don't want to see this happen. The Democrats are fuming over this kind of stuff. It's like I said in my last video where the Democrats just cannot catch a break. You have the Democrats hopefully and falsely believing that Michael Cohen was going to come out and testify against Trump and say, oh yeah, you know, the Russian collusion thing, that really happened. Yeah, I found all this kind of evidence. Yeah, that didn't happen. You have the left getting beat on CNN because CNN is losing ratings as I speak. You have all of these Democratic lies that are being exposed right now. You have the Democrats, you know, in damage control because their own numbers, their own polling suggests that they are falling by the wayside in terms of, you know, the American support. And now you have these recent numbers coming out about the food stamp enrollment and the numbers are declining. 
And Trump can use this to his advantage and say, look, look how good my economy is doing. This is the Trump economy. And people will associate a good booming economy with conservative populistic presidents, especially the newer generations, which is Gen Z, which the Democrats have completely lost. And of course, rightfully so, but this just shows me that the end of the Democratic Party is looming. That the end of democratic policies and democratic programs are looming. And that would be a great thing for our economy and our country. But either way, you guys go ahead and let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.